Hello and welcome to the Amory Speaks podcast, where I'm talking about all things introspection, spirituality, and happiness. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, I'm going to be talking about a topic that is difficult for a lot of us, abundance. I am currently struggling a bit through uh, some rather unexpected bumps in the road that uh, have cropped up in my life, and I have been really actively trying to transmute these fear and anxiety, worry feelings that are coming up. Um, Previously, uh, I would typically go into spiraling worries of what ifs and, you know, have to be massively planning step by step what I'm doing. (laughs) I have heavy Virgo placements and uh, it's, the organization is definitely a crutch for me. It's almost like a a drug, (laughs) a need to have this like discipline and next step so that I feel for myself that I can show myself as well as everyone else that like I have it under control, even though I have no idea what I'm doing. I still have it under control, right? (laughs) Which is such a joke because you have to remember that you don't have control over the big picture. Um, which is a reason that I chose that to do an audio today, again, a, a reading of this blog I posted the other day on abundance, because I really wanted to tap back into the essence and message that was coming through when I wrote this blog, um, little, you know, entry blurb for the morning um, because it can't it comes from such a space that's so important to remember in a times when you like me right now um, are unsure of what the future might bring this is the most important times to be able to trust that there is an ultimate plan and not micromanage the universe or attempt to um, So yeah, let's get started with this quick morning blog that I had wrote on abundance and unconditional love, as well as its inverted version, scarcity. The point I would like to briefly scratch the surface of before we get started is just this scarcity idea and specifically how we've been given this vision of scarcity on earth, that earth's bogged down and limited in her resources. And that in order for humans to survive, they must manage every exchange with frugality and restriction. First, I would like to set the ground level here because it's important for clarity when we start unraveling distortions and trying to identify inversion tactics, lots of confusion can creep in, especially if terminology and common mindset aren't foreshadowed in the start. Uh, We could really lose where we're going, right? If you're not sure what other people are talking about. Um, And it can really promote more distorted conclusions, which is obviously the opposite of my intentions with this writing and with the podcast. So I just wanted to clear up some vocabulary Um, for this topic specifically only at this time, I'm gonna be discussing mother earth as an entity, sub logos, a goddess, whatever you choose to envision along those lines of a sacred being with its own volition who has not only higher knowledge but also a more heightened sight, a longer view of the big picture. As we are creations connected to her and her divine plan, purpose, and journey, right? We have to remember our place setting and also the sun and the astral place 
as well. Um, I won't get into like that whole sound logo source piece of the grid connection in this discussion right now, but just know that it is there and it's prevalent in the large scope. Another common term um, that I'm gonna be speaking about in this conversation is going to be the human, right? <laughs> Um, for the sake of this dissection and discovery session, I would like to view humanity as a sub sub little guy and therefore a deviation of source creator consciousness, which has stemmed out from the original God or source creator. This perspective is loose in accepting of possibilities when it comes to origins. It leaves open doors and windows and maybe even a roof hatch, if you so choose, to explore and bring in whatever kind of wording, visions, connections that you feel drawn to. It just states that we can all agree that we have come from this single mind of a higher creator of some sort, and therefore we are also sacred, powerful creator beings. An important aspect of this particular enunciation of humanity is the impact that it has on quote unquote evolution and the world of modern science in general. <laughs> there is a large group of humans who choose to blind themselves to obvious truths in order to create a controlled sub environment, which is close enough to what they would want as a test situation. And then they conduct their experiments inside that cage and confirm, of course, that their findings do reflect solid truth and prove that there is no God. <laughs> How convenient and shallow, right? But many of us are not amused or confused or ignorant to their tactics any longer. And so, the collective of humanity is becoming more aligned to truth and love. As a whole, we are starting to seek higher connection and knowledge, which is the product of this upward evolutionary growth within the plan or journey of the logos of Earth, of Mother Earth in general. A line in the sand gets drawn at this point. Is there a master plan, plot, or general schematic theme which the universe is guided by? Or is this all a result of randomized and unconscious chemical reactions? Perfect coincidences. You know, that people do believe that it's a random randomized thing and that's valid to them um but if you choose to align with the plan theory then we agree we stand on common ground here and i'd like to take it one step further and i would like to point out with this acceptance you can easily see humans are here on earth for a symbiotic purpose our vessels are made of the same materials as Earth. When our spirit passes on, the vessel remains and rots. It decomposes divinely and is recycled and reused by nature. Perfectly. It's amazing. The connection's quite obvious and somehow our bodies are part of Mother Earth and her amazing ecosystem planning. Everything is useful. Every cycle is replenished, renewed, and made new again. There's no waste, no overflow or useless thing created in her organic matrix we call nature. <laughs> With that structure realized, now apply the lens to humanity. We fit into her puzzle. We did not create it. We don't share her view. We cannot assume that we stand above the puzzle 
or on top of it. That is ignorant and narrow-minded. If we accept our place within the ecosystem and unite with nature, then we can be shown the ways that work. Nature will unlock the doors to harmonious living and human, humans, humanity, <laughs> will see new paths which align with mother nature's divine plan. Currently, humanity is paving its own concrete road straight through the middle without any regard for fluidity, flow, natural design. This is most likely intentional, right? We all know it. But for the sake of this discussion, I'm just going to leave that whole premise alone. And I'm only bringing it up um, just to show the consequences of this dominating and careless approach that we've taken. This mismanagement has resulted in, in such a convenient appearance at the surface level um, of negative structures like failure, lack, scarcity, struggles. It seems like we're abundant in those, right? The abusers and controllers, they use this appearance like a template or melody, which they recycle and amplify. Through bombarding repetition, they lock in and constantly reinforce their false architectures and control the matrix. They fear the flow of the unknown. And so they need to convince all others there is no unknown. There's only their constructed visible systems and nothing else is proven. And so it doesn't exist. If you had the eagle eye vision of mother earth or perception of organic symbiosis taking place within the infinite intelligence of nature, then you would never fear change or realignment. It's a restructuring or redistribution of resources that's taking place. And if you trust and listen, Mother Earth will show you, much like water does, that there's a way through. It may be smaller than you can imagine. It may take time longer than you can comprehend right now. But there is a force behind the catalyst and it is happening for a reason. Most humans have been disconnected or cut off from the connection and have forgotten how to listen to nature. Therefore, it's no surprise to see how easily they are fooled into the false frame. This inverted world is what many call the matrix. And it's a topic to explore all on its own, which I don't want to get again. I could go on to and on about, but not for this time. Here, today, I'd like to focus on the original organic matrix, which lies unaffected and protected simultaneously here within the field, like an overlay or invisible architecture. It is always there for us to connect with and live among, should we so choose to raise into her frequencies. The organic natural world contains its own magic and intelligence. It is different from humanity, but it doesn't mean we can't interact with it. If we, as humans, choose to acknowledge it as a whole, and we focus our intentions on creating systems that communicate with nature, we would never face scarcity, starvation, or lack of any kind. You see in nature always finds a way. A simple but powerful metaphor I was shown was this. Out in the wilderness, if you discard a piece of trash, plastic, say even something containing radioactive substance that causes harm to any direct life sources in that area, no matter the level of slight contamination, nature will dilute it. It decomposes the material. It breaks it up slowly, pulls the pieces apart with its own 
tender, careful knowing. Nature recycles each piece of matter, each molecule. How? Why? Exactly what tells these seemingly separate inanimate pieces to work in such a distinct way as to break down and reconstitute new materials? Humans have so much to learn. However, the metaphor or lesson here runs deeper still. You can pile up that same trash here or there and nature will still take care of it over time. You can slowly poison or hurt areas, but still perseverance will prevail and nature grows around, breaks down and incorporates the materials in different ways through all different stages of decomposition. It is only when the intake of pollution becomes absolutely overwhelming that an area becomes symptomatic and the system strains to breaking point. Our own vessels work under these same structures and set of rules. Even after catastrophes, there's rebirth. There is such an abundance in nature. Wherever is needed, is given. This environment is not suitable to lack or fear. <laughs> and so, like discussed before, an inverted structure was created in order to set parameters which would promote the energies these entities can harness and benefit from. Anything which connects or highlights the organic functions and structures has been demonized, desecrated, or abolished completely to ensure most of humanity stays within their house of mirrors. This is why poverty and servitude have become so popular. These mind states are in sync with the negative frequencies of the matrix, and therefore even though they are naturally disharmonious feelings for human beings, they have actually become comfort zones and crutches for so many because they feel harmonious to the negative melody constantly playing throughout the matrix. Such a mind fuck when you really understand the level. You have to feel bad for those who get stuck in the tune the melody, but I mean, it's also not our job to break them free, right? We need to constantly remember these inverted structures we live among because no matter your residence, whether you can raise yourself into the organic higher densities or not, your physical vessel and the physical plane of 3D, 4D earth are cemented into place. For that is their purpose. And you, we have incarnated here for purposes aligned to these densities, right? We have a purpose in these densities right now. The veil of forgetting has been lifted for many. And as more pour in here to raise the polarity, humanity will continue to see more clearly these stiff, archaic and arconic structures for, for what they are, restricting manipulation. Humanity will continue to revoke consent and pull back their personal power from these external systems. Slowly, the negative buildings will crumble and fall. For those of us who can see the big picture, it's never been more important to shine light onto the uncertain and point out inversions for what they are. Light is known by what it reveals. Darkness seeks to conceal and hoard for its own fruition. As beings of light, we cast out a beacon which seeks to see, accept, and integrate all it encounters. And so that which wants to stay separate or hidden will naturally abhor the ray of curiosity and do everything in its power to evade its presence. When we feel an encounter that causes friction of some kind, recognize that your beacon has cast a shadow or reflected upon something. You have enlightened or irritated some energy which is negatively polarized. 
the worst thing you can do at that point is to ignore or write off that catalyst. As soon as you make that energetic exchange, you give away your light. You empower the shadow. You allow it. You enable it. No matter how uncomfortable or unsure, you must continue to investigate the thing. This is where abundance or unconditional love comes in. To renew the cycle, right? If you're able to tap into your soul connection with Mother Earth in that never-ending creator essence that we started talking about at the very beginning, right? If you can bring that back in or even get within and explore, um, it'll allow you to define and provide support to that catalyst so that you can actually explore it and see it for maybe close to what it is. Maybe alchemize it. Love it. Do what you can to hold the candle of honesty up against it and ask yourself, what does this issue want? What is its goal? If you work to incorporate understanding into it, then there'll be room for clarity and organization. I will give a word of caution and advice on unconditional love, though. If you haven't tapped into your own internal well of renewable energy and love, then you really need to in initiate this flow of working um, to be able to alchemize these negative energies effectively. Because <clears throat> otherwise you're going to run the risk of falling into liar loops where you fool yourself and your thinking mind, right? Into believing that you're enlightened and so you're above personal and soul work. This is a trap that many fall into, but work is eternal as we are eternal. And so if you bump into any shadow and it reflects back quote unquote completion, you can know there's a loop at work mirroring stability and superiority back uh, to an unstable and insecure inner soul in there. Unconditional love or abundance is unexplainable, really. It's so personal and unique that each one of us experiences it differently. Different sensations call it up, different practices invoke it and in different people. But one thing remains, it's a frequency which has to be felt. It can only be felt. And only feeling it brings confirmation that it's real, right? <laughs> Such a paradox. However, you, when you tap into your own, you know when you feel it's real. And just know at that time when you feel that, you're embodying Mother Earth. She powers the Taurus. She holds the flame uh, in a crystalline heart in her center. It is always there for you if you choose to tap into it and renew yourself with it. Anytime you feel yourself stuck with a hard frame of the matrix, remember, we came here to manifest in abundance. We came to feel love and to share it. Hold yourself in the space of your mother's warm embrace and release the grip or chains that bind you to the inverted or false world. Remember, the true underlying organic matrix is always waiting to catch you. And that is the end of the transmission. I'm very happy to have you read that. It really provides such grounding that I need at this moment. I hope it will provide the same to you if you have stayed to listen. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a blessed day and I will talk to you again soon. Goodbye.